So this is the Hex Inverter Mutant Brain. This is a MIDI to CV interface with uh, programmable gate and CV outputs. So what we do is we use a SysX patch editor that's online on a web page, and then we create a SysX file, and then we use a SysX librarian to um, send the SysX file to the Mutant Brain so that we can reprogram it. We've got four CV uh, outputs, which can be note information or CC messages. Um, and then we've got 12 gate outputs. The gate outputs can be either triggers, gates, um, they can relate to the notes, obviously, or we can just have them as MIDI note numbers. Um, we've also got a CC kind of threshold. So as we goes over a certain threshold, spit out a gate on one of the outputs. We've got clock um, and clock divisions and all the transport messages. So run, stop, etc. So yeah, let's just um, jump into some patches and we'll see what it can do. So here we've got the uh, mutant brain being sequenced via the Digitact. The Digitact is um, going to be sending a single monophonic voice to the Kameis Tycho here. Um, and then we've got three CC messages. So you can just see, if I adjust the parameters on the Digitact, you can see our CC messages being changed on the mutant brain here. So I've sequenced these. Um, and if I press play, you'll be able to hear the Akemi's Taiko. Akemi's Taiko has been processed twice. So we've got one uh, just straight going through the Optimix with an envelope at the same time as being triggered at the same time as the module itself. Um, it's just to rein it in a bit because Akemi's Taiko is quite mental. Um, and then we've got uh, the second output, which we've, so we've doubled this output split it twice and one is going into the Borg filter um, and then that is being processed by a cloud. So um, clouds has also got some modulation on it, which is being uh, sequenced or these kind of parameters are being sequenced by the voltage block down here. Um, and that's being clocked by the MIDI clock output from the mutant brain. So if we start to hear that, Um, we've also got accents and chokes going in here. That's on these two outputs here. Um, so at the moment they're muted. So if I unmute those, you'll hear what difference that makes. And then we've got some other kind of percussion uh, down here, which has been triggered um, obviously from the uh, Digitact. So if I just bring some of that in. Just like simple things. And then we've got a little kind of percussive thing that I've made. So you can see now if I start adjusting these CC parameters, you'll hear. Obviously, I've sequenced them as well, um, but you can see. So 
the, the nice thing about what I feel anyway about Kim's Tycho is that it's got so many sounds in there. So being able to uh, sequence parameters is a really um, nice way of being able to get more kind of from each step or each sound, which is really quite fun. Um, that kind of leads me into the limitation of using the mutant brain for something like this. Although it's nice to have one monophonic voice with three CC messages, it would be nice if these gate outputs could be CC messages as well. But unfortunately you can't do that. So this is where we can create our mutant brain patch, uh, sysx patch. So if we go down, we've got our note input. So this is useful for selecting our note priority. Um, if we're doing polyphonic operation or um, mono, uh, we can do keyboard splits here and we can do velocity and pitch bend kind of ranges. Then we've got our CV outputs. These can either be the note inputs, so one to four. Obviously we've only got C four CV outputs, so we can only do four note polyphony. And we've got MIDI CCs, pitch bend, channel after touch, BPM to CV, and fixed voltages. So um, when we put in a note, we can select uh, a transpose, so we can transpose up and down uh, octaves. We can also have different schemes of uh, voltage, so we can have volt per octave, hertz per volts, or 1.2, which is Buchla standard. Um, and then we can channelize that as well. Um, if we go down again, we've got our gate outputs. So these can be either the note inputs or a MIDI note. So a MIDI note is more useful for if we were just triggering drums, we could select a specific note for a specific output. Then we've got CC messages above or below a certain threshold, clock tick, clock tick plus run, and then the various transport controls as well. So if we select one of these, we can obviously select the MIDI note, uh, which MIDI note this is gonna output on, and then the velocity, we can also then select whether or not it's a trigger or a gate or a re-trigger. The triggers have various different lengths, so that's useful um, if we wanted to have a longer sustain period on the, on the trigger. And then CC above a threshold or below, we can select the channel again. We can select what the source of the CV CC message is um, and the switch at which it will be above or below the threshold. Again, we can change the trigger to be a gate or uh, a length of trigger. Then when we move down, we've got clock tick. So this can be divided various different divisions of clock, uh, or we can have pulses, 24 pulses per quarter note. Uh, lastly, we've got our transport controls, and these are just um, based on whether we stop or start or run. So yeah, that's kind of it really for programming. It's very easy. Um, the other thing we can do is load an existing sysx file. So if I go here, then I've got, I've downloaded this pack. There's very, a few different kind of preset packs for the mutant brain. Um, I've also got this mutant brain clock one here. So we would load that in. So once we've done that, we click this button down here, save our uh, file that we've created. And then we would need to use a sysx librarian to send the file to the mutant brain. So if I go over to the sysx librarian here, um, I've got this already loaded in. I could select one of these and then here I would select my MIDI port. I haven't got this plugged in at the moment, but you can see, and then we just play that into, play that MIDI sysx file into the mutant brain and it just happened. It just updates it very quickly. So we can quickly change the operation of our mutant brain with the sysx librarian and change up what it's doing on the fly. So it's very easy to do that so long as we're connected to a computer with a MIDI output. So, this is a little three voice patch. We've got um, three voices being all sequenced via the Digitact over here. Um, and they're obviously just going through the mutant brain. So we've got one voice, which is our Kemi's Tycho, that's our bass, which is 
obviously going through some delay. We've then got uh, this telharmonic voice, so that's... And finally we've got the graphic VCO which is doing a kind of ARP thing that's going through uh, the clouds up here. But we've taken the two outputs, one is kind of sequenced fast and uh, going through the clouds, so that's this one. And then the second one is, uh, the second output is an octave below and that's going through the Borg filter and that's got a much slower um, envelope down here, so... It just happens every now and again, but obviously they're receiving the same pitch, so... So the mutant brain, first of all, let's talk about the price. It's 149 pounds, which is a very good price for something that gives you this many uh, outputs from uh, MIDI data. Um, the second thing to mention is that you need to use a SysX manager to actually send the SysX file that you've created in the web page to the mutant brain. It would be nice to just be able to send the file from the uh, editor, but you can't. Um, kind of comparable, MIDI to CV interfaces out there are something like the FH2 from Expert Sleepers, but obviously that's a lot more expensive and doesn't give you quite as many outputs. Um, but you can do some kind of more interesting stuff with it and you can program it on the fly because you can program it actually on the, on the unit itself. Um, and then the Endorphin Shuttle Control gives you more outputs and more kind of MIDI um, LFOs, sample and hold, noise, that sort of stuff. Um, but obviously that's, again, that's much more expensive than, than the mutant brain. So the price point really puts it in a category of its own, really. A couple of things that I would like to have seen with this is maybe some more CV outputs or some of these gate outputs could have been uh, CVs as well. And then maybe some kind of like MIDI LFOs or something in the, um, in the programmer, so you could have uh, LFOs coming out of some of these outputs as opposed to just uh, CC and note data out of the CVs and gates and triggers out of the gate outputs. Um, but overall, I think it's a great unit for the price point and there's not really anything else out there that I can think of that is comparable. It's a great interface for if you've got a MIDI sequencer, something like a Digitact or, um, or the Pyramid from Squarp, uh, those sort of things would work really well with this because you've just got so many gate outputs that you can use to uh, sequence the rest of your modular. Yeah, really uh, for the price, there's not really anything else out there. But thanks for watching.